So I think I'm going to suspend my last question because I know there are people who want to ask questions and we have about 11 minutes left and Elise has been raising her hand, so we'll let you go first. I, 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 I have a question for each of you. I'm not going to answer my one question. I know we're going to So my one question is to Aisha, your, your, your comment about recognizing the need to come to class prepared is every faculty member's dream. So I know that every here with you from Wow, I'm going to make that happen. So I'm wondering if you could, and you've explained to us what the consequences are at BU for not being prepared coming into that lecture or I'm assuming or safety at least lab, whatever. Um, can you speak of so can we assume that the, what, what happened at, you, at MCC, be general, let's pretend you didn't have anybody that's in this room as any of your professors, okay? But in general, if you were to have come to class unprepared for lecture, lab, whatever activity, what would have been the consequences there? Um, I never came You never did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can say I did pretty well. I would, I would literally, I would study for my exam the day before. The, possibly the night before, and I would get A's. Wow. Um, and so my first semester at BU, I learned very quickly that that does not work. And so attempting to study for a four-hour exam the night before at BU is, is a death sentence. <laughs> um, and in, like I said about the curve, a lot of, you can study. And I did that after my first semester, I did read before and prepare after, and you would, st I know, I would get exams with 69s and I'd be shocked and I wouldn't figure, I couldn't understand why. I did everything I was supposed to and then I found out the average was a 53. So technically I did really, really well. <laughs> and that was really hard. And I mean, a lot of the syllabus, the syllabus will say, the professor will tell you, it's so expected that so many people will fail the exams that they will tell you, we will bump you up to a 75 automatically, every exam, because it's so hard. It's really intense, and so if you don't do it, if you get caught, it's just, it, you can't let the material, it's, you have to keep up, there's no way. Um, a week before the exam, not only are you trying to study for the exam, but you're trying to prepare for your other classes at the same time, and so it's safe to, s I, I remember studying at MCC for my exam the night before and getting A's. Um, and so that's the, that's the difference that I, that I experienced when I transferred over. I don't know if anybody had a similar... It, it comes across loud and clear that the demands of the four-year school are heavy. Would it be helpful here if we were more demanding in our coursework than perhaps you experienced? Um, I would say yes and no. <laughs> because if you put a lot of stress on the student already for a two-year you know, community college, like, if you do similar work, what you do at UMass, BU, Tufts, and everything, you know, putting that student already in that situation, like, oh, God, I don't want to go to that four-year college now because, you know, you're going to get hard work, you're going to expect hard work. But at the same time, you do because you also want to prepare to see what it's like. So, I mean, it's a little on both sides of the spectrum there because you want more work, but at the same time, you don't. Obviously, you will be reluctant, reluctant on it, but at the same time, it's like, I want to do it to better yourself later. Um, so I'd say it would be a yes and no. I, I would say it's a balance in finding certain aspects uh, about each course to say, okay, I'm going to make this one major project and it's going to be 40% of your grade. And if you don't do it, then you probably fail the class. But I would say certain things. Don't make the like all the entirety of it too difficult or higher in standards, um, just in moderation. So you think one signature big project per course would be good preparation? Is that what you're suggesting? That I mean, Because it sounds like you all, your regular projects would be a major project, yes. or bigger than a right. major project. Yeah, so I, would, like, I would say so. I, because the projects that I had here, it was they weren't as, as large as the ones that I have now, mm -hmm. but they, it, like I said, moderation, depending, Pick something in the in your course that you want to stand out most for the for the year and or the semester, and then that be the you know preparation for it. I think that I uh, you know it's it's hard. I think because of, I, I didn't take any honors courses, which um, was unfortunate for me, so I can't really tell you um, 
I think the you know the honors level should be pretty close, you know, because there are people that want to succeed, and um, you know it's just the nature of a community college. There's a lot of people in transition. They don't know where they want to be, or if they want to do college, or if they're trying to do something else. Um, I, what makes a huge difference at these four-year institutions, um, you know, especially the competitive ones, is um, you know, these kids know exactly what they want, mm -hmm. and, and they know that they have to work really hard for it. So I, I think that that would be a plus and minus. I mean, if you if you added more work, you know, the determined people would be more prepared. But I think you might lose a lot more students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. We appreciate your yeah. 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 Can I just before questions? I wanted to say that. I um, I did not feel prepared with, um, I, I obviously learned a lot here, but I honestly did not feel prepared with the material that I got. And I did a solid two years, two and a half years here at MCC, and I had to do so much catch-up work. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's just in the science, I don't know if that's how people feel in the sciences or other majors as well, but I um, went into my, you know, into my first math course, getting A's from MCC, and I was not prepared. Is definitely not mm -hmm. Sally, and then I have, Mary. Uh, I have a question. Um, so I think the transition is always going to be, there's always going to be that trend. I mean, I don't think we can save you from that, okay? But <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my experience. I mean, I, my own personal experience would be. But I think the thing I'm looking at is you use, man, you survive, like you manage. So are there skills that you, you know, maybe you didn't study science, but there are skills that you know, like you know how to crank them up if you have to crank them up. So even though the, the you know, the bar goes high, and that first semester, and that's a, a universal experience of students. I mean, that's everywhere. That's coming from high school to a full year. But do you have, are there skills that we could provide that will allow you to deal with that? You know, like what skills that are, did you get those skills, but then you just had to, and move them up to high gear when you had the higher, the bar was higher. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think, personally, from experience, I would say something that would be really, really helpful for the students, if even if they're planning to transfer or not, is a time crunching course or something like that. You know, managing your assignments and stuff like that, because, you know, a lot of, and I'm, I can tell from experience from these other students, you know. You have to schedule, you know, everything to an exact T for these four-year institutions. If you don't, you're already going to be falling off the ball. Like, you're literally going to be trying to catch up and everything. And even if you transfer already with A's and stuff like that, you're, you're still trying to catch up. So, I mean, one thing that I was doing at Middlesex besides, you know, doing all my coursework and stuff was that was definitely managing my time and stuff from what class and class are much more important versus, you know, classes that you know, I can sacrifice for the other class and everything. Because I think, you know, if I'm focusing on my major, I need to focus more on those classes. So if I spend more time on that versus, you know, my history class or anything like that, I think I'd be more prepared. And I think it did help me a lot to prepare for the time crunching. I mean, by hours, like few hours that I had to prepare for exams and everything. So I think for students that are transferring specifically, have time crunching skills or you know, a study guide about time crunching and how important it is. I would absolutely agree with time management skills. And so actually Clark, their student leadership and programming board, asked me to write a blog post detailing how I personally manage my time. Yeah, uh, j yeah just because when I joined Clark, I did well in my classes, but I also joined a, a ton of different clubs. Uh, I'm a board for six clubs. I'm part of two university clubs, and I'm active in over 20 clubs at Clark. <laughs> and that's on top of, you know, working part time and, you know, also doing well in my classes. And so I would absolutely agree with time management. And I think that here in Middlesex, I started to kind of do that, and so I got involved in whatever clubs I could, and then I started to see how kind of the relationship between how much I need to study, how much time I can dedicate to the clubs if I want to be part of their kind of executive board. Um, you know, volunteering hours, working part time. So did you do charts? Did you have like charts plugging your hours? <laughs> yeah. And so my dad, being an Excel wizard, he's like, "Here is the formula they can use." I'm like, "Thank you." So, <laughs> so, but, but yes, but yes, absolutely. And I mean, my iPhone has been my savior. I use the calendar, you know, function there, and I input anything in there, including I need to like at Clark. 
I need to schedule when I eat my lunch and dinner, and sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even do that because I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do think that time management is a key skill, and perhaps doing like a workshop or something. I don't yeah. know how you could try to encourage that in classes. <laughs> I don't know if that's if possible. Uh, yeah, right, because you want your but, students to be doing it, but perhaps offering kind of more workshops or you know speakers on that topic. I think that's the thing that's saved me most and has allowed me actually to be so active in the student you know body just because I have the time to do it and I feel comfortable. Right. Thank you. Any, any other skills though, before yeah. we move on? Really quickly, being, uh, being proactive. Um, you, if you were to be, go to lecture, you did not understand something, you email the professor after you get out of class. You do not wait for the questions to pile up mm -hmm. and then ask two weeks before the exam. And so I got into the habit of doing that, finally. It took me so long. <laughs> but you get out of lecture, he's like, I don't know what this is. You visit either his next office hours or you email him, literally sitting at your, you're like, your life lecture, email him, I did not understand this, and figure it out as you go, instead of letting everything pile up and trying to figure it out and watching all these thousands of Khan Academy videos two weeks before the exam, even though he is wonderful, but. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my question. I think Mary had a question. I was wondering, did each of you have to work with Keith? I know you said you work still, and do you work now with the colleges that you're at? Do you mean work specifically at my college? To, or? No. Just oh, okay. To, to make money. Oh, sorry. Do you um, need to pay for your own education? Yes. And one thing that uh, Dr. Toby told me was, you know, you cannot do full time. And if you can, then you are a reincarnation of some being up there. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I work at McDonald's as a part-time worker. And even then, trying to manage my time from an eight-hour shift at work to, you know, four hour studying of exams before or prior is even then difficult. So, you know, if you try to do full time, good luck to whoever does that and that's for other students, my advice for other students. But it is possible, you just gotta be much more careful in what you do, I guess you could say, if you do tend to work. If you want to be a full time student and without, you know, worrying about work or anything like that, it'll help you. But you know you want that money because you know these four-year institutions are pricey. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. So personally, I did work full time while at Middlesex, paying for my own education, and then going to Clark, I definitely could not do that, even with my time management skills that I think I developed. And so I work about you know 10 to 15 hours per week there to go. Yeah, I worked full time. I worked 40 hours a week. I volunteered at two different places: the VA and the school I was at Middlesex um, uh, you know I was lucky I mean the, the elementary schools of Bill Rick and the VA is right down the street right so uh, and I, I was always in Bedford um, and I worked 3 to 11 every night and then I'd do it again in the morning um, but I had a different job I mean I was a security guard I, mean, I am the security guard in Cambridge um, I can do a lot of reading while I'm at work <laughs> so uh, it's it's hard for me to really compare you know uh, um, I was told actually when I started Middlesex that if you know, you worked, um, if you went to school full time, worked 40 hours, you know, it wouldn't be possible. But I, I think I just have one of those jobs that it's just easier, you know. Um, and it's the same thing now on the weekends. Uh, you know, on the weekends, it's even slower. Um, so I only work the weekends now. I work 16 hours a week. Um, I do volunteer during the week. Um, it's still at the elementary school. It's hard to schedule sometimes. But, um, um, yeah, I think if I didn't have a job like this, there's no way be able to do it, you know, um, and I'm lucky enough to, I do get help from the GI Bill at Tufts, it doesn't cover even half of my tuition, uh, but, uh, you know, I do get help with that, and, uh, and I also have a scholarship, so uh, don't want that. I worked 30 hours, 30, 25-ish, for the two years that I was, here, I was here at MCC, impossible to do it at BU. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, not even, I, would, I wouldn't be able to spare 10 hours a week. Can do it. Yeah, and I'm very fortunate that I don't have to, um, but it would, it would have really set me back on my academics. Kelsey? I have, I was so afraid to fall behind in my courses at MCC, even though they weren't super difficult for me. Um, so I didn't have a job, and I, I still don't right now, because there's no way I'd be able to even have a part-time job with the workload that I have. I have less classes now in my senior year, but these classes entail so much more work. 
like three times as much work than I had when I had 14 classes. So I have openings, but I also don't know what I have available because I have to be going to elementary schools and middle schools and doing teaching and observing all around like this part of Massachusetts. So I, to even find a job on campus is very scarce to find one. And so I, I am not really able to afford college, but I have a bunch of student loans and, and debt until I'm dead. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I, I don't have a job and I'm not able to work right now. Well, I just want to thank all of you. This has been so enlightening, and thank you for thank taking you. your time to come today. And thank you for coming. Thank you. If we could keep you here all day, they would be happy. <laughs> <laughs>